Did Respawn just make the most annoying legend in the game? Possibly even worse? Let's find out. Here for the second guide of the series, we will be covering Conduit, one of the strongest team fighting, if not the strongest team fighting support legends in the game. To start, let's go over her abilities. First, her passive. After looking at a teammate outside of the Conduit tactical range long enough, this range being 50 meters, he gains a 30% boost to her sprinting speed. This passive only applies to her sprinting speed, meaning walking or sliding, both won't trigger her passive. After meeting the requirements to proc her passive, you will continue to have it for an unlimited duration until she stops looking at the ally that caused her to proc her passive or said teammate gets into tactical range. This takes around three seconds or so for her passive to start and stop working. Now to her tactical. Conduit's tactical or Q ability is one of the strongest support based tacticals in Apex Legends and one of the few support support abilities currently in the game. It has a 50 meter range and when targeting a teammate to use it on, you'll see a different colored shield icon based on that teammate's current armor situation. White means full shield, green means temporary shield, yellow means more than 50% but less than full shield, and red means less than 50%. These colors can help you quickly pick which teammate you want to grant temporary shields to without having to look at your squad's total health and shields in the bottom left of your screen. Even though it seems simple, her tactical has a bit more depth than it appears. When she casts her tactical, the the first 9 seconds, Conduit and Targeted Ally will regenerate Temporary Shield if there are shields to regenerate. Targeted Ally would regenerate at a rate of 15 or so shield per second until full or the duration ends while Conduit will regenerate at a rate of about seven to eight shield per second. This changes to 10 or so if Conduit is the only one regenerating shields during that first nine second time frame. After this period is up, the temporary shields given will stay for 30 seconds or until shot off. After that, lastly, there are remaining shields. They will decay at double the rate they were regenerated at and fall off. This ability has a 26 second cooldown from when it's initially casted. Lastly, her ultimate shoots out seven jammers in a line that each have 200 HP. After landing, it takes about four seconds for them to engage, showing their effective of range around each mine. These mines deal 10 damage per second and slow enemies by 15%. The effect is similar to getting stunned by an arc star or walking through Watson's fences. Oh my god. Now onto her skill perks. On level blue or level two, it's a very obvious choice to take access denied. This increases Conduit's ultimate's mine's damage radius. The transparent little circle you see around each mine showing its range by 10%. The other choice on the blue level allows you to see batteries in death boxes. Now I switch, bigger ult or C battery counter. So battery count is pretty useless, truthfully. I mean, you're gonna look at boxes anyway. It's something I picked it on accident. Swap it with the bat. Look, it shows on the death box is the bat. I know bat counter is so OP, dude. You can also just look at it. All right, now I can do the thingy again. Bigger jam. I'm pretty sure I'm taking the uh, extra ult. I mean, this battery one, pretty rough, pretty rough. Next, on purple, purple evo, or level three, split charge is the stronger option, giving you an extra tactical charge while having only the healing duration part of your Q. This is good and bad as you have an option to spread out your shielding instead of fully committing attack on one person. Slight downside is that if you only want to shield or give temporary shields to one person with your ability, you have to cast it twice. The other option in the purple or level three evo level gives a 15% increased range to our tactical ability, moving the range from 50 meters to about 57 and a half to 58 meters. This is a nice increase, but nothing super significant compared to the double charge option. He's not having a good time. <laughs> All right, so the next upgrade, definitely the second shield charge. <laughs> Hold on. I'm dead. Come on. Second team. Good point. 
funny. you want to see more content like this that will help you get better and rank up, subscribe and follow me on my socials so you don't miss our next video. Shit, good shit, good shit. But also, uh, respawn? If it's more than one, we fight it. If it's one, we we definitely punch him. Oh yeah, we punch him for sure. <laughs> the little Valkyrie. Oh! All right, she's just. Oh, she's trying. Oh! Hey, blood! Hey! No, no, GG. We're trying to punch him, man. Come on now. Many of the weapons I'm going to be suggesting for a lot of these guides are going to be meta weapons as they're just the strongest weapons to play based on the numbers regardless of which character you're playing. For Conduit, if you're playing more passively, G7 or the 30-30 is a safe option as they're easier to consistently do damage at longer ranges. For second gun slot, you can opt to take either an automatic AR to fill that kind of mid to closer range better, the 30-30 or G7 can't, or an SMG like the Prowler, which is currently the best SMG in the game as it kills quicker compared to all of the other options. The Volt is also good right now in terms of SMGs. You're more comfortable using that instead. If you're playing more aggressive, using a Burst AR or even the LSR are good non-single shot options paired with the SMG. Shotguns like Mozam Hammers are also pretty good this season. It's like PK and Massive as well. They all are some of the few guns that can use digital threats since the change in season 20. In terms of loot, ult accelerants are good on conduit as you can have mines up almost all the time, especially in the end game. Besides the ult accelerant point, your inventory is pretty standard and will be pretty standard for a lot of legends, including two to four stacks of ammo per weapon based on which weapon you're using, unless you're playing shotguns. Here's the rest of my typical inventory. Now to the important part, how to use her abilities better to help you win more fights, climb, hit some sick place. Conduit's abilities themselves aren't very complicated, but timing is absolutely everything. Starting with her passive, it's really good for closing the distance and catching up with your team, as usually on Conduit, you're anchoring your team's position and watching your back in rotation. It's also very useful if you're playing a longer range gun like 30-30, G7, or even Kraber or Bow, as you can output damage to get a knock, then close the gap with the passive and shield your teammates. Next, the most important aspect of her kit tactical. You'll get used to it when you use it on your teammates over time, but a good rule of thumb is you don't want to use it on a teammate unless they have or already taking damage. This is fundamental to Conduit's kit and something I see a lot of Conduits, even at the highest levels, do wrong as her tactical only provides the temporary shield regen for the first nine seconds after casting it. Meaning if you use it on someone who's full before they're about to fight or gets full right before they're about to fight, it means that you're wasting the strongest part of it. Another major aspect to this point is making sure your allies don't shield themselves using batteries or cells to get full while getting queued by conduit, especially when the shield regen aspect is active that first nine seconds. This is something everyone will get better at over time, but the majority of players, even at the highest levels, again, are still bad at this, especially healing shields while being conduit queued and the regen is active. When used effectively, a single conduit tech can completely change the outcome of a fight allowing your teammates to hold, trade, and push 
more effectively disrupting the flow of the fight. Yeah, that's that's how you use a conduit key right there that's exactly how you use a conduit key you just sit on it i saw the regen regening me so i regen i waited i didn't heal i instantly tried to take a med kit played the corner conduit shot the angle with me just relied on the conduit queue to continuously heal me because i still had time then i popped a med kit after and i kept the conduit queue on me didn't heal even though it was still up because uh lost 30 seconds and then heal after queuing you queuing you queuing you Can't get through all this. Yeah. Killing you again. But as we. AD on the conduit. 350. Now the fact that I could Q Koi twice there and he just full healed, like practically full healed red. That's a little, that's a little something. Lastly, our ultimate is a really good zoning tool as the seven mines deployed have a large area of effect, especially with the access denied perk level two blue one one small thing to note here is that when casting her ultimate she has a semi-long animation time of four or five seconds it can be cancelled by weapon swapping to be able to start shooting a lot faster the conduit as we can see here with my gun if i hold an insta swap I can start aiming and shooting right away and I don't get caught in and stuck in the conduit ult animation. Aggressively, you can use it to force enemies off their position and pushing as it adds visual clutter and causes enemies to move or have to shoot the mines out. This is very strong in buildings as the mines spawn to the left and right of the middle one and they get deployed, meaning you can ult in the building to fill the room with mines. Alternatively, if you ult in the building, if you ult looking down at your feet, the mines kind of form a V-ish formation to allow you to disperse the mines in a building in a different way. Defensively, you can use your ultimate in those same situations, but on the opposite side, preventing pushes, denying area, and even catching enemies like flies around a bug zapper. Because each of the mines has 200 HP apiece, it can also be used to tank bullets as cover when reviving a teammate, or if there's no cover to play, here in the open since they have similar height as a rampart wall without the top energized part or railing now how to counter conduit there really isn't any good way to counter the conduit's abilities as her strongest and most important skill is her tactical you can tell when an opponent has temporary shields as there's an effect around the legend model and when conduit casts it on a player she sends out a bluish beam when you see this unless you're already fully fighting swinging into each other taking a few extra seconds to slow the fight down and wait for the region to finish can help tremendously as for her ultimate you can't do much to counter it besides shooting out the mines or running around to try to avoid them now to what i don't like about conduit honestly even though she's very very annoying to fight there isn't much i really dislike about the character besides the fact that she can kind of instantly heal and change the fight without much counterplay or it being easy to notice he's one of the few real dynamic support characters in the game that allows you to support your team when both being aggressive and defensive he can be annoying to fight as you may think you have a free knock but one tactical can nearly heal full shields. This is especially broken because you can use the tact through her wall or when you don't even have LOS on your teammate. And especially, especially broken with Revenant as he already gets a 75 health regening overshield. In season 20, Conduit got a couple much needed but slight nerfs to her abilities. That being said, she is still very strong especially in both pubs and ranked, especially now that support bins are valuable resources to leveling up your Evo. At the highest level of Apex, ALGS, you probably won't be played as much as other characters or comps specifically have more value and bring a little bit more to the table. However, for contesting a POI or drop spot, she is one of, if not the best legend, the new Evo system as everyone is on white armor off the rip, leading to conduit tactical, sometimes fully healing a teammate shields twice during a fight drastically helping you win. Conduit is still strong, but not as overpowered as before. Time will tell if she still fits in the comp meta and ranked meta. Huge mahalos if you made it to the end of the video. If you want to see more content like this that will help you get better and rank up, subscribe and follow me on my socials so you don't miss out. If you want to learn how to master one of the strongest legends in the game, click on this video right here. And as always, mahalos brothers for watching. Till next time, shoots.